first teaching that I want to give you is of a beautiful value illustrated in the Bhagavad Gita in chapter 13, verse 8, which talks about um, which talks about um, what you can do so that you become a gift to yourself and to this whole universe. What are the things you can do? Amanitvam adambitvam ahimsak shantirajivam acharya pasanam shaucham sthairyam atma vinigraha This is a small teaching, verse 8. Of that I'm going to teach you because I've already taught the other values which you can find in my prior videos. The value of shaucham. Shaucham means purity. And every day, don't you? Dear one, realize that your body has become dirty from its transactions in the world, from its movement on the earth. So it needs to be washed, it needs to be cleansed, it needs to wear pure clothes. We all do it. Most of us do it if we are of healthy mind and balance. We are physically healthy, we want to be clean. We feel that inner urge to be pure. In fact, I have met people who are on the deathbed and they request that before dying, they should be washed once. They should be given pure clothes to wear. So it's almost like an inborn instinct to be pure. But shacham here represents another kind of shacham, the shacham of your mind. You see, as you go through life, as you go through the ups and downs of relationships, you shall find that so many things are emerging in the sky of your mind. Insecurity, jealousy, hatred, fear towards others. All of them start settling into the crevices of your mind. And they won't go away until you cleanse your mind. They're going to stay forever. On top of that, because you're an eternal being, this mind will travel with you to the next lifetime. All of this will go with you. So I will teach you a practice today where every night and every morning you purify your mind. It's very important. It's all virtual, but virtual stuff can become pretty dense unless you run a virtual cycle on it. Not only hatred, anger, and loathing another, but even deeper uncleanliness comes from a self condemnation, constant shaming of ourselves, non-stop guilt, I'm not good enough, I'm a loser, I don't deserve. You know why this is so terrible? Because the Veda says you should not condemn yourself because you are that amazing self, you are an amazing being, you are, you are Atma, your soul. You can never, never be sinful. What has happened has happened because of your reflection in the body and mind through the ego. There is room for everybody to learn and grow. Even the darkest and most terrible criminal need not go into a cycle of self-condemnation. Instead, needs to move towards knowledge and understand that eternally pure, eternally deserving, eternally wonderful being inside you, which is yourself, your sovereign self in a capital S. And once you understand that, once that condemnation ends, which is just a waste of energy, has any of you benefited from self-condemnation? In fact, it's just a convenient way out. Let me just fret and be mad with myself. Instead of doing that, when you do short term, you purify yourself, even of that, then there is space to learn new ways. 
join a global classroom, attend satsang, contemplate on new ways and guide your ego self, which is known as the jiva or the shadow in you, like a gentle understanding parent or teacher would guide a child or a student. Imagine coming to your teacher and the teacher just says, you're so terrible, you're so horrible, you're so pathetic, you go stand outside, you just stand on one leg and punish yourself, then where is the room for anything? Might as well we all just, you know, lie down in a fetus position and just cry ourselves to death. Because all human beings are making those mistakes because that is part of the spiritual setup. There is a part of you that's learning and there is a part of you that can be the teacher. So stop condemning the learning part. Stop calling it names. Stop shaming it. And instead, bring it in closer and purify your mind from other condemnation and self-condemnation. All these negative things, despair, resentment, depression, um, all of this, you know, they create a shocham or uncleanliness of your mind. Oh, those ragas and the dveshas, I like this, but I dislike that. I want this, but I don't want that. I want things to work out this way, but not that way. Oh, I like those people, but don't show me that face of that person. Oh, dear me, the smudge of envy and the splash of insecurity. Yeah? And the streak of melancholy. <laughs> and the dust. Do we need all this? Do you need this? All of this is settling into your mind on a 24-7 basis. Can you imagine what your mind feels like? It needs to hear, it needs to hear about the need to actually cleanse your mind. You all have laptops. You all purge the laptop of unnecessary files. You all cleanse your smartphones of unnecessary open windows. But do you think about purifying your mind, which actually we human beings can do simply by auto-suggestion two times a day, if not every moment? <laughs> your mind is like an open sky. There are too many dark clouds. The beautiful radiance of your inner soul, your inner sun shall not come through. But if your mind is like the open sky, then beautiful pink colors and orange colors and marigold colors and all of those beautiful, joyous colors of creativity, of radiance, of not pride, but proud self-celebration. Those kind of rainbows will be everywhere. So it's your choice. The thing is, your path to joy, your path to wholeness, your path to well-being is also through the same mind. It's not like you can order another mind for your spiritual journey and then order another mind to deal with that same world and those same people and the same you. It's the same mind. So it's for you now that as you go through the world on a daily basis, even to benefit from knowledge from a teacher who's willing to meet with you and share with you the authentic knowledge, to be able to find places to assimilate it, hear it, assimilate it, and contemplate it and convert it into an emotional conviction, you need a pure mind. But oh, those streaks and smudges and dust of encounters of the virtual kind <laughs> have taken over your mind. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, just like you maintain a daily external cleanliness, every one of you is on a spiritual path, then why not let go of this false identification that you have with your jiva, with your ego? Literally, you can observe it like a parent would observe a child, a toddler. The toddler went and stuck their hands in soup. Let's wash their hands. The toddler went and, you know, ate from the trash. Let's make them gargle and clean their mouth and give them fresh milk to drink. 
So toddler is doing silly things, foolish things, and toddler is getting scared of just anything. But as a parent, you know that what the toddler is fearing is not worth fearing. So when you come to your teacher, the teacher enables your parent self, then you go back and look after your toddler self. Stop condemning it. Love it. Love the learning part of you. Show it the way. Give it satsang. Give it jnana. So, yad bhava tad bhavati. Say the Upanishads, which means as you think, so you shall become. So you will have to watch your thoughts on an ongoing basis. What am I thinking? What am I thinking right now? Because these thoughts are going to become your words. Believe me, no word spoken is random. If you've been thinking about somebody privately in your mind, what a loser, what a loser, what a loser, and you think you're doing it privately, one day the word loser shall come out of your mouth. That word loser is writing thousands of private thoughts. And that one thought became a word and it became public. So therefore, watch your thoughts because they become words. Keep speaking, keep saying, I'm a loser, they're a loser, world is difficult, this is hard, that is there. And then watch your words because your words will become actions. You will start behaving that way. Your actions will show whether you fear the world or are you playing in the world. Your actions will show whether you are trustworthy and you trust others or not. Your actions will show what you were thinking a long time ago, which became words, words became actions. And watch your actions because they become habits. It's not a one-time action. Every action has the potential of becoming a habit. Because the mind simply likes to be on an auto-repeat button. Do you know that? And then watch your habits for they become characters, say the Upanishads. And watch your character for your character becomes your destiny. That is why all of this is happening in the field of your mind, known as Manas in Sanskrit. In the field of your mind, yad bhavam tad bhavati. Therefore, to be able to think the thoughts that I want to lead you towards thinking. If you thought thoughts, wait a minute. I am enough. Wait a minute. I am fully supported by the universe. Wait a minute. This so-called obstacle must surely be a door that's leading me to where I need to go. If these are your thoughts, your words will become positive and hopefully even when you speak them, you are hearing them. Your actions will become courageous instead of procrastinating and feeling powerless. Your courageous actions will make a character out of you which believes in spiritual newness and spiritual enterprise, the enterprise of self-recreation. And because of that, your destiny will be one who achieves their goals, both material and spiritual. So therefore, Shaucham is critical. Shaucham is not just something you do on the side or you don't. All you really have is your mind. You don't have the money in the bank. You don't have those relatives you think you can bank upon because everything in this realm is impermanence. Anything can happen. Banks can fail, earthquakes can happen. Those relationships that you bank upon, they suffer from three Ds, you know, distance, disease or death. Anything can happen. But what you have is your mind. What you have, the only treasure you have is your mind. So if there is one value that you want to adopt is then to be super caretakers and finicky about your mind. What are you holding on in your mind and what are you willing to release on a daily basis? Because it doesn't deserve to be in my crown. If you were kings and queens, which you are, by the way, Upanishad says that you're a sovereign master, not meant to be a slave of this world, seducing you with its 
temptations, ephemeral temptations. If you are a king or queen, would you just put anything up on your head or would you only want to wear a crown with jewels? The head is really important. The mind is really important. What do you want to put in your mind and what do you want to cleanse? It all is shacha. So there are a couple of ways that you can purify your mind. One of them is known as Pratipaksha Bhavana. I do this all the time. You see, there is a part of me that is learning, that is growing. And you might say, well, Shunya, this is my first satsang. I've never really you know, heard Vedic wisdom before. You have students who've been with you for so many decades. I'm just brand new. How, I don't even know if I have a teacher side and a learning side. I just feel like I don't know anything. I'm confused. Not true. There is an inner voice that whispers to you the right thing. You just didn't listen to it. If you became quiet, tell me. Right, yes, I heard that voice in the comments. There was a voice that guided you. Whether you should be acting out right now or not. Whether you should be forgiving or not. Whether you should be being cold with a person or not. Whether you should be eating a certain food or not. Even before eating that extra um, spoonful of dessert, there is a voice which says, stop. So dharma or guidance is really not outwardly imposed. It's actually the lifestyle of the spirit. It is actually the way you would automatically begin living were you in connection with your own true self. It's just that the Vedas have to remind us because we have forgotten. We're so busy because we gave the steering wheel of our life to the toddler. Way we watch you where we're going. Oh, oh, watch out, get out of our way. Our toddler's driving our car. Oh, 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 oops, we bumped here. Oh, no accident. Oh, 911. That's our life. But why not you let the little toddler be on the side seat and you start listening to your deep inner voice. It will always be a win-win voice. Even if it's a voice that says, I shall not forgive the other person. As Krishna advised Arjuna, do not necessarily give away your forgiveness. <laughs> because sometimes in punishment, the other person benefits or learns or awakens to their spiritual truth. So it's not about being goody two shoes or being holy. <laughs> it's about wholeness. And wholeness is your nature, say the Upanishad. They say that one of the name, one of your characteristic of yourself, which is Atma. Atma comes from Apunoti Iti Sarvam Atma, that which is boundless. Atma is Purna. It, it has Purnatvam, it's wholeness. It's Anantam, it's infinite. It is full of joy, Anandam. It is equanimous and peaceful no matter what the toddler is going through. It, it enjoys Samatvam, radical equanimity. So there are two parts of you. And in Pratipaksha Bhavna, when the toddler starts thinking some thoughts, that is when your default mind just starts entertaining some thought, you would want to, you the adult, want to immediately question that thought and then probably think an opposite thought. An example. I am from the, I am from India. I come from a, climate which is very warm and it's sunny all the time and it rains only in summer so it's actually very welcome and the monsoons are um, you know it's warm sunny and it's raining so it's very romantic and um, uh, romance a divine romance is happening there's greenery there are birds and there's just it's beautiful when I came to California, I found out that it's cold and it's raining. 
So the first thought my mind decided, the toddler mind decided was, oh, we're going to get really depressed in this cold and dark, rainy weather. Pratipaksha Bhavna from the adult in me was, but it's perfect. If this is the divine setup, then this is the right rain for California and this is the right weather for me, who Ishwara, the divine allness, has ensured that I live in California. This is perfect. And now it is one of my favorite seasons. I think it's cozy, it's beautiful, it's warm, everything is green, everything is being nurtured. But I could have developed a whole story around how I'm from India, this is terrible, this is a trauma, there's something wrong with the universal intelligence, it should really have not put cold and wet together, it should only be hot and wet together, the way it's back home. And that is how the toddler complains and whines and comes out in, it becomes really unhappy and dissatisfied with what is. Pratipaksha Bhavna is our responsibility, if we are a true spiritual seeker, to question any thought that has a charge. Hey, you're feeling thirsty, you have a thought like, I'll go drink a cup of water. You don't have to question, really? Do you really want to drink water? That's wasting your spiritual energy. Go drink your water. What I'm talking about is any thought that is capsizing your inner equanimity, your inner joy, your inner hope, your enough, your inner enoughness, your inner contentment, then question that thought, question it, and replace it with an opposite thought. That is how it helps. I knew a public speaker once, and the public speaker was quite well known, but the public speaker shared with me, <coughs> Shunya, you don't know this and the world doesn't know this, but half hour before I go out and speak to the world, my heart starts thudding really fast. I can't even, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very nervous. So, oh no, this is a situation. Oh no, I confirmed it, I have anxiety. And, and they had a lot of data to support their misery 30 minutes before they went on to the crowd. And but once they were on the stage, they were floating and <laughs> they were doing fine. So I taught this person Pratipaksha Bhavna and I said, when this thudding, inner thudding and discomfort starts happening and you start thinking, I'm losing it, I'm powerless, I'm anxious, question it, replace it with another thought. And the thought was, no, I'm not powerless, I'm not anxious. Oh, please, the toddler wants to just do some drumming inside me. I'm fine because right afterwards, I'm going to have the audience eat out of my hands. That power is still inside me. I'm just having some fun with this. And literally, by that person challenging those thoughts around anxiety and fear and fear of public speaking and all kinds of psychological, um, you know, um, convictions that person had had like I don't deserve to be a speaker but I am a speaker I'm like, you deserve everything why don't you use Pratipaksha Bhavana so we have to do that on an ongoing basis especially with thoughts that go against our eternal sovereign nature you are Atma you are spirit you happen to have a body and mind you are aware of your body so therefore you are the awareness you are not the body you are aware of your thoughts and mind, therefore you are the awareness that is aware of the thought and minds, you are not the thought. So therefore do not be bullied by the mind, instead challenge it and change the mind literally by thinking a new thought. Anybody who has tried to do that and anybody who has done it even once is amazed at how quickly the mind gets changed and starts behaving the way you want it to behave. This is the key, my dear, in the Vedic 
tradition, you are being told that you are the sovereign master of the situation. The reason for your sorrow is that you have given away your power to your own toddler, to your own equipment, to your own shadow, which is the body and mind. It has It is taking power from you. You are the source of life. You are enlivening the body and mind, you as in the self, as in the Atma. But now you think you have no power. It's a case of forgetting. It's like I giving one of my students all my money, saying, here, you keep it. And, you know, I'll take it from you when I need it. And the next day I have amnesia. I forgot that I have given the student my money. So now if I want to even buy a glass of water, I can't. Now I have to beg and cajole and please. And, 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 and if the student frowns or is looking a little moody, I can't even ask. We're afraid of our own mind. We're terrified of our own body symptoms. And here I am as a teacher who has started a whole revolution around my own students, literally ordering their mind to do their bidding and telling their body, not now, calm down with those symptoms and get me back into health because I deserve a first class journey through life. And that is our birthright. We are the children of immortality. We are immortal beings. But we have forgotten the whole spiritual journey of the Vedic uh, Upanishadic path is of unfathomable power, soul power. It's not just about feeling good, feeling peaceful, hurry Om, hurry. It's not about that. It's not just about oh, let me have a little bit of peace so I can be a nice mom and a nice dad and a good employee. All that is just shifting things around to be to buy some more peace, to buy some more time. This is about radical discovery of who you are. If you're interested, stay on. If you're not, if you just want some feel good, little bit of, uh, here, teach me a little mantra that's going to sort out all my problems and I'm not that teacher. You know, If you want to learn painting, you're not going to just buy a box of crayons, will you? If you want to be the painter the world remembers, then you have to become a painter that the world remembers. You have to find your inner painter. You have to find your inner Ribhuvananda, that mystical painter who is full of joy and is painting. This whole universe lives inside you too. Find that painter. Find that inner infinity, that Ananta in you. Then go back and be the employee, be the dad, be the mom, be the soccer coach, be the person who has a business, a shop, a butcher, doesn't matter. Because all that then is play time. Shocham tells you, take care of your own mind. It's just your own equipment. Don't let those thoughts become your reality. Question every one of them, especially the ones that take you down the slippery slope. Ask, question, challenge. Sometimes when I challenge my thoughts, I realize that's a very important thought and then I sit with it. But other thoughts, they get challenged. Then I shall share with you what Baba shared. That first thought is okay, don't worry if your first thought is terrible because they come from your swabhava, prakriti, your inborn nature. Thoughts of selfishness, thoughts of being self-absorbed, thoughts of making quick money, thoughts of something that are not necessarily where you want to go. But your journey is not dependent upon your first thought. The Veda says, have your first thought. Your whole journey from thought to word, word to action, action to habit, habit to character, character to destiny is dependent upon your second thought. So do not, if you have a lusty thought, a non-dharmic thought, an unethical thought, don't think you're a bad person. This may be just residue from so many past lifetimes of what you heard on the television or something like that. But you dare to think a designer's second thought will change your destiny. That's what it is. Oh, I'm just depressed. Oh, I think I just need some rest and then I will be fine. I have always been defeated. Ah, I have been learning every single time. Really, let me give myself credit. What I call defeat is really amazing ability 
to confront the darkness. Look who I have become. Let me celebrate who I am. This is the way to think. The cleansing meditation at night become like the sky. Close your eyes. Let me lead you through it. I am the vast sky, an infinite expanse. There are no boundaries to me. I dwell in a body, I use a mind, but neither the body nor the mind circumscribe me. Unnecessarily, I don't need to be squeezed into this body or mind. Thank you, body and mind, for letting me use you through this life story. But really, I am vast and endless, infinite like the sky. My consciousness is ever expanding. In that, I can play, be and become what I want. I am right now recharging my own body and mind by first purging it of all the virtual bits of bits and bytes of energy, negative or positive, that have become attached to my vast net. I let it all go. It is all floating away. I remain the infinite awareness. I am content unto myself. Things may come, things may go. I am complete unto myself. I am radical peace. Even if externally there is difficulty, there is strife, my peace, my decision to be peaceful depends on me because my nature is peace. This peace is not borrowed even through meditation. In meditation, you only manage to connect to who I am. I am peace. It need not be borrowed through negotiation or through any kind of mediation. My nature is peace. I am that vast, eternal existence. I have no boundaries. I carry no stuff. I am pure. I am clean. My name is Nirmala Vimala. I am that lotus that is blooming in pure consciousness. Every morning when I wake up, I am that pure lotus. Every night when I sleep, I am that pure lotus. I am pure because that is my nature. Niranjana, blemishless. I am an ancient being, Sanatana. Eternal Nitya, forever sovereign Mukta. I have done nothing, so therefore nothing sticks with me. Akarta Bhokta. That is who I am. I am vast like the sky, pure, cloudless, where the rays of my inner sun are pouring forth, delighting me, shining everywhere, blessing everyone.